won't forget the wonder of how he brought deliverance to the exodus of my heart. Cause you found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my hands. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to get fit today? I hope so, because we're wrapping up our Get Fit message series with the message about how to love God 
with your mind. Welcome to Holly Church. I'm so glad you're here. You picked a great day to be here because in a moment I will be sharing that message. But before I do, I'd like to ask you to open up your connection card page so you can let me know you're here and also so you can take some next steps for your own personal spiritual growth. There's next, new next steps each week on your connection card. And to open up your connection card page, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, just click the link in the description. If you're at Holly Church Online, just hit the tab right below this video. In every case, it'll open up a brand new page so you won't miss a thing. And then after the worship service is over, you can shoot that connection card off to me. We look to Jesus to bring fitness into every area of our lives. Jesus wants to bring peace and stability into every area of our lives. But he can't do that unless we're allowing him to bring change into every area of our lives where we need to change to be more like him, to be more like Jesus. Would you please bow your heads and join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we look to Jesus to bring change and stability to our lives. We pray for your will to be done on earth as it is already done in heaven, beginning in our own lives and spreading from there. We ask for you to continue to guide Holly Church as we look to Jesus, and it is in his name we pray, amen. This week's message, Get Fit Intellectually, is partially inspired by this book, 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You. And a lot of ways the phone is changing us concerns our minds. We can't sit and think like we used to. We are distracted all the time. Often we can't even take a walk or enjoy a meal without looking at our phones. Because of our phones, we aren't reading uh, the printed word as much as we used to. And people say, well, uh, well, I read on the internet. Well, yeah, but it's not deep reading. And people who really enjoy reading are even finding at, that they cannot concentrate for as long a time periods as they used to be able to. Technology is a wonderful tool, but it's a horrible master. Studies are finding that over usage of social media platforms may be contributing to depression, anxiety, and stress. 5% of young people are said to suffer from social media addiction. Now, the scope of this message today is not focusing on the wise use of technology. Uh, For help in that area, I would recommend reading this book right here. It gives some great guidelines for using technology but not being mastered by it. It's written by a Christian from a Christian perspective. And I encourage you for yourself, and I really encourage parents not only for yourself, but for your kids' sake to get educated on this subject of the wise use of technology. In 2018, at the Consumer Electronics Show, 87% of the world's leaders and pioneer thinkers said children are spending too much time with technology. And 82% of them said the tech industry is not doing enough to educate the public about responsible usage. As I said, this uh, message isn't about the wise use of technology, but this book did get me thinking about how do we love God with our minds? Jesus, when asked, what's the greatest commandment? In other words, what's the most important thing you can do to be right with God, to obey God, to have the best relationship with God possible. And here's Jesus' response to that question. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all, and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this led me to ask, how do we love God with all our mind? Sometimes we may think of Christianity as being more emotion-driven. You know, you got to have faith. But it's really not more about any part, one part of us. Jesus is equally concerned about our emotions and our minds. So Jesus is equally concerned about every part of our lives. So how do you get fit intellectually? 
How do you love God with your mind? Get fit intellectually by learning all you can. You may be wondering, where do I begin learning all I can? Well, Proverbs 4, verse 6 says, acquire wisdom, acquire understanding, develop good judgment. Those are all good things, wisdom, understanding, good judgment. But where do we get them from? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, for the Lord, or Yahweh, gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So where you begin to learn all you can is by looking to Jesus. A good place to start is by being in worship each week and learning more about Jesus. And also to be reading through your Bible on a daily basis. This year we have our Look to Jesus Bible reading plan to help you with that. If you haven't received one of these yet, make sure to email us. We'll get one sent out to you. From there, I would suggest reading a book or a magazine, the, the printed word, on something you're interested in. It could be history. It could be finances. It could be gardening. It could be about a, a movie you're interested in. It could be physical fitness. It could be hunting. You might uh, also consider reading a book or a magazine that's related to your field of work to uh, improve your career. You might want to read this book, 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You. And I'm suggesting reading because we're talking about fit minds. But what if you don't like to read all that much? Well, you, you could even read a Archie Digest if you want to. But you still might say, well, I, I'm just not that good of a reader. Well, you can learn a lot from video and from audiobooks, listening to books. Why should you be concerned about getting fit and learning all you can? Well, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 5 says, wisdom brings strength and knowledge gives power. When you get fit intellectually, and you're learning all you can, it brings strength into your life, it brings power into your life, especially when you're beginning with a focus of looking to Jesus and learning all you can. Now this next one ties right into what I've already begun to share. Get fit intellectually by asking God for wisdom. There are some people who know a lot and are very intelligent, but they're not very wise. They don't have eternal wisdom. They may have an earthly wisdom, but they don't have an eternal wisdom. And often, uh, with this earthly wisdom they have, they're, uh, they think they're better than you, they know more than you, and they certainly know more than God if, you know, He exists. And you can glean... You can glean wisdom from those type of people. But only God can give eternal wisdom to you. G James, Jesus' brother, tells us we should be asking God for wisdom. We shouldn't be arrogant. We should be humble and ask Him for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. And who doesn't lack wisdom? Only the foolish and the arrogant would say, well, I don't need more wisdom. And unlike people's wisdom that is constantly changing, God's wisdom is always sure and true. Man's best wisdom and understanding, as I said, constantly changes. And the more we separate ourselves from God, the less wise we are. That is self-evident to anyone who has eyes to see and ears to hear, as Jesus has, Jesus has told us. The more we separate ourselves from God, the less wisdom we see in our culture, our society. One of the reasons the first next step for your personal spiritual growth each week is a new memory verse is because this helps you gain wisdom. I've said 
before, don't get caught up in the memorizing part. What you do each week is you look at your connection card online, you know that page, and you see, oh, this week's memory verse is Matthew 22, verse 37. You uh, mark that in your Bible. And then I would suggest in the morning, you read that verse each morning. And when you do this, you're thinking about it, which is meditating on it. And maybe even you're memorizing it by the end of the week. A small portion of God's Word. And you get wisdom from that. And I recommend doing it, reading that in the morning because then it will remind you also to pray and ask God for wisdom for that day. People sometimes say to me, well, I don't always feel close to God or I don't feel close to God right now or how can I stay close to God? Well, of course, being engaged in a worship service is the number one thing that you can do to feel close to God, to stay connected to God. But there's some other things that you can do as well, like uh, reading that memory verse each morning or being in a connect group during the week. Staying in touch with us online helps you. You know, if you haven't liked and followed Holly Church on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter yet, do that. If you haven't liked and subscribed to Holly Church on YouTube, do that. If we're for some reason, you're not on our email list, make sure you get on our email list because this helps you stay connected to God, but it also helps us reach more people uh, with God's Word as well. Now, all of those things will help you keep that closeness, that connection to God. And we're talking about loving God with our minds and we do that by learning all we can, asking God for wisdom, and get fit intellectually by living God's wisdom, applying what you learn about God and from God to your daily life and how you live. Intellectual fitness is not just about gaining knowledge and wisdom. It's about living it. It's about learning and doing. It's about that's how you love God, with all your mind. You may have heard the phrase, knowledge is power. Well, like a lot of things you hear, that's only partially true. The truth is, knowledge used is power. And during this Get Fit message series, we first talked about getting fit with a new heart. And we said... A new heart is a listening heart. A new heart is a prioritized heart. A new heart is a worshiping heart. But if you choose not to listen to Jesus, and you choose not to make Jesus a priority in your life, and you choose not to worship, then it won't grow you spiritually. You won't grow spiritually with a new heart. You can know those things. Hey, a new heart's a listening heart, prioritized heart, worshipful heart. But if you don't actually do them, you're not going to be living wisdom. You're not going to be growing spiritually. Then we said, hey, get fit uh, with a new mind. And you get fit with a new mind by believing God's promises. But if you don't live like you believe God's promises, <laughs> are you really getting fit with a new mind? You get fit with a new mind by uh, living God's purposes, by serving others. Are you doing that? Do you serve others or do you just sit back? A new mind recognizes God's presence. Then I shared a message about being spiritually fit. And there's two key words here with that. Give God. That's the two key words. Give God. Say that out loud with me wherever you are. Give God. Give God the first part of your day, which means having a daily time of prayer and Bible reading. Give God the first part of your week, which means regular, consistent worship attendance. Give God the first part of your energy, which means you're serving others in God's family, in God's church. Give God the uh, first, well, that's all of it. So what will your answer, you know, one day you're going to stand before Jesus and He's going to ask you something. Maybe he's going to ask you, did you give God? And what's your answer going to be? Because you have the knowledge. 
but did you really live it? After that, I shared a message about being financially fit and gave you a 30-day plan toward a life of physical fitness. I gave you a book that had a 30-day plan in it, and someone asked me about the book, will this really work? (laughs) Yep, but you have to live it, you have to practice it, you have to do it, and if you won't even read the book, then then you're not serious about being fit financially at all. What about physical fitness? I know I should eat healthier and exercise. I know I should take time to rest from my regular work each week and worship God. I should commit to sexual purity. But if you don't do those things, you're not somehow going to get magically, physically fit. The very same thing applies to the messages from the last two weeks. Get fit with good friends and get fit relationally. You can learn all about those things, and if you don't live any of them, then what good does it really do you? Wisdom is meant to be lived. Intellectual fitness is only complete when knowledge is put into practice. You haven't learned anything until you've actually lived it, until you've actually done it. Jesus, after demonstrating and teaching on the importance of serving others. And how Jesus uh, taught on this and demonstrated this was, he said, you should serve one another. And then Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. And in that culture, they wore sandals, so their feet were dirty. And it was the job of a slave or a servant to do this. And Jesus takes that role of a slave and a servant, and he kneels down and he washes the feet of his 12 apostles And then after he does that, Jesus says this, John 13, verse 17, you know these things. You've just seen me teach and demonstrate that you're to serve others. And God will bless you if you do them. James, Jesus' brother, echoes these words. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do... What it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Verse 25 again. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, you're learning all you can. You're asking God for wisdom. James continues. And if you do what it says... And don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Did you catch it? It's about learning and doing. It's about living God's wisdom. And you have an opportunity to do that, to know God's word and to live God's word, to be fit intellectually, to love God with all your mind. And you have this opportunity with the approach of Easter. Jesus tells you, he says, you should fast and pray. But how often do we really do that? Well, we have an opportunity leading up toward Easter because our Easter fast begins Wednesday, March 2nd, and then it will wrap up on Thursday, April 14th. It's a 40-day fast, and during this fast, you pray. You pray for Jesus to strengthen you and to build that personal relationship you have with him. You pray for those you want to invite to an Easter service or for opportunities to invite people to an Easter service. You pray for the Easter outreach of Holly Church as we try to reach as many people as possible, to invite as many people as possible to an Easter service. That's the prayer part of it. What about the fasting part of it? What do you fast from? Well, you fast from something that you enjoy. You fast from something that you'll miss. Many people fast from a bad habit or a sin they would like to have out of their lives. 
Whatever it is, it's something you miss, so it reminds you, hey, I'm relying on Jesus right now, and I'm praying those three prayers that we mentioned. Now, maybe you already know you've been praying about what you want to fast from, and you already know what you're going to be fasting from. But as I did last week, I still want you, if you haven't been doing this, I want to encourage you to take this next step on your connection card. And your connection card, if you're at Holly Church Online, it's a button right below the video. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, just click the link in the description. And I want to encourage you to take that next step about praying about what you should fast from. But remember, you're not really loving God with all your mind until you actually begin to fast on Wednesday, March 2nd. Maybe in thinking about your life, there's something else you know God wants you to do, but you've just been holding back. Maybe it's to extend forgiveness to someone. Perhaps it's to control your tongue. Or maybe you need to end a dating relationship that's unhealthy or a friendship that's not a positive one. Or maybe you need to be proactive in your marriage And start showing love to your spouse, even though you're not really feeling all that loving at the moment. What is it that you know you need to do with Jesus' help to more fully live wisdom, to love God with all your mind? Loving God with all your mind means learning all you can, asking God for wisdom, and then living God's wisdom. I received an email from Don after our January 30th uh, worship service. Uh, Don uh, attends in person, and on January 23rd, we had the Get Fit Financially message series. Now, in our in-person services, you had an opportunity to fill out a form and uh, have uh, the chance to win a $500 debt paydown courtesy of Holly Church. And then on the 30th, in person, we uh, drew the the winners of that $500 debt giveaway. We had one in each in-person service. And Don's name was drawn, and you're going to get to meet Don here in just a second. Don's name was drawn in the 9 o'clock service. And Jesus had already been speaking to him about what he should do if he won that $500. So... Here's Don to tell his story. Hey, everybody, this is Don Thompson, and he and his family are new to Holly Church. So, Don, what first brought you to Holly Church? Well, me and my family have been uh, going to the Trunk or Treat over at the Boys and Girls Club since my daughter was was very, very young. And and, uh, for many years, um, every year they would hand out the cards and invite us to the church. And for many years, we never came to church. And so um, this last year, uh, my daughter's 10 now, and she has really been uh, wanting to come more to the church and want us to come with her to the church. And so um, this year, we got that card, and we decided to come and attend Holy Church. Right. And that's awesome. And I've heard, you've, you've expressed to me already, that God's really been working in your life through this Get Fit series, specifically when we were um, talking about getting financially fit Absolutely. and all of that. So what's, what's gone on there? So a couple of weeks ago at service, um, my name was called in the service that I had won the challenge uh, the, the, or been given the, the money for, to help with my debt. Um, I, was, I was really shocked. Um, I didn't really know what to say. Um, And after I got over the shock, I immediately knew what I wanted to do, uh, which was I wanted to give that money back to the church to be able to uh, help more than just myself. And I think a lot of people could use that money and, yes, pay a a payment on something or or help them in their debt. Um, But with being able to give it back to the church, I felt like I could give a lot more back to a lot of people. Um, when I left here that day and you allowed me to, you know, I was able to do that through the church, um, 
you know, I just had a really good feeling about what I did and that how it was going to help so many people. Um, and a couple days later, you know, like on Tuesday, um, I was at work and I was having a conversation with my, my employer and um, they called in one of the owners and they closed their door and uh, they went on about, out of the blue, about what a great job I was doing and they gave me a salary increase. And it was a substantial salary increase, like life-changing salary increase. Um, I was, again, shocked. I was floored as to what was happening. Uh, I asked them why. They really didn't have a reason why. Uh, just told me to keep up the good work and uh, keep doing what I'm doing. And so, of course, I was grinning ear to ear for, you know, a day. You know, I just couldn't believe how this was going to help me with my debt, you know, of some of the debt that I've compiled over the years. And a day and a half later, my wife called me while I was at work and said that there was a note on my motorhome that was sitting in my driveway that I've owned for quite a few years uh, that I bought and spent way too much money on it, and I was, for the most part, upside down in it. And um, I had tried to get rid of it before, but I just couldn't get out of it. And it was a substantial, over $30,000 worth of debt on this particular motorhome. And um, my wife called me and told me about it, and I, she said, what do you want to do? And I said, call him back, tell him sure, we'll sell it. And she's like, really? And, and I'm like, yeah. And um, so she called him back and said that, yeah, we might be interested. And he asked what we want for it. And she called me back. And I told her, I said, well, you know, I want $35,000 for the motorhome. And I knew that was too much. There's no way this guy was going to pay this for the motorhome. And um, so she hung up with me, called him back. Um, he said, done deal. <laughs> and he drove out to our house the next day with a cashier's check went down to the bank with me and paid off my $35,000 worth of debt. Um, so it just, as that was happening to me, I couldn't help but to think how the amount of money that the little bit that I was able to do at the church and how that was God working for me, he was helping me at, at the debt relief, everything that you're talking about in church and how the books that I'm reading and the reading plans that I'm doing. And I've read more of the Bible now that I've read in my whole life. And, and I'm following the reading plans. I'm looking at the debt-free stuff. I'm, I'm seeing it and I'm understanding how that um, impacts your, how it impacts your faith, how it how it can change your faith, how you make time for it, how it becomes a priority. Um, and, and it's really changed me and it's brought me closer to God. Thank you so much, Don. That, that's just a powerful testimony to when we you know, open our hands up to do what God wants us to do, then it frees him to be able to bless even more than you could ever imagine. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's an awesome testimony to the power of God's promises found in James chapter 1, verse 25. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for being true to your promises and blessing us when we live what you teach us. Thank you for blessing Don, and thank you for prompting him to share his story of your faithfulness. Lord, it's so easy to get distracted by things that aren't all that important. So help each one of us to learn all we can, to remember to ask you for wisdom and to live what we're learning. Forgive us when we fail to love you with all our minds. We want to declare right now we love you with all our minds. And it's in your name we pray, amen. And let's declare that out loud wherever you are. Jesus, I love you with all of my mind. Say that out loud. Jesus, I love you with all of my mind. If you're new here at Holly Church, make sure to let us know that on your connection card. I'd love to send you a copy of my book, Unshaped. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to give you? 
Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you hear that empty feeling? When shame's done all it's stealing, and you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way. Jesus should be giving financially to support Jesus' ministry work here on earth. Every believer knows this, and most do give, but there's a, a few who, who don't. And so if you're one of those few, I just want to encourage you today to give something. How much? Well, that's your decision, whatever you're comfortable with. Give something and start living what you know and experience more of God working in your life. For everyone who does give already, which is most of you, thank you so much for your generosity. I just pray that Jesus will open your heart to greater and greater generosity. Holly Church is completely supported by the people who attend, whether it's online or in person. All of our giving options are on the screen. Next week, we begin a brand new message series, Tough as Nails. Invite someone to church with you, whether it's online or in person. Until then, may the Lord keep you and bless you and protect those of you who are His.